Hi guys, thanks for joining us today. Hope you all are safe. So please join me to welcome our guest speaker, Christine Davidian. Hi guys, I hope you're all safe and feeling well and want to thank you for inviting me today to speak to you instead of being there in person. And I really do hope someday I am there in person to show you my whole presentation. So um, my name is again, Christine Davidian. I'm a third generation Armenian genocide survivor slash descendant. And what I wanted to just say to you today was teach you two, two words in Armenian. The first is Parev, which is hello in Armenian. So I hope you all get to say that together, Parev. And then I'm gonna say thank you in Armenian and I suppose you're not going to be able to be able to say that very easily in Armenian because that's a tough word. So thank you very much for inviting me. So about my background, uh, when I said I'm third generation Armenian genocide survivor, that means that my grandparents were the first generation to come to this country. Second generation are my parents and I'm the third generation. So you may have people in your family um, anybody that's come to this country is a first generation, anybody born, it could be you or it could be your parents or even your grandparents, your second generation, and then third generation. What I want to talk to you about is um, my father's family. And this is uh, my father's father or my grandfather, my father's mother or grandmother, my father here, my aunt, and this is another aunt. My grandmother and my aunt were the two people that actually survived the Armenian genocide. My aunt was two years old at the time. They lost a lot of their family members in the genocide, but they were able actually to escape with some relatives going north out of um, uh, west eastern Turkey to survive. And um, uh, my grandfather was actually in this country at the time. So my grandmother and my grandfather remarried when they made it finally to the United States. Let's go to the next slide. One of the things that um, I remember about my grandmother, she talked a lot about the Armenian Genocide, like some of the other relatives that survived, they talked about the Armenian Genocide. My grandmother used to say, nothing is sweeter than water. And that always impressed me because we take water for granted every single day. We just go buy a bottle of water and drink it as if, we would never have to worry about where water came from. But the Armenians, to survive the genocide, water was critical. That was the one thing that they had to survive. So to her, that was the sweetest thing. So when you think about it, the next time you pick up a glass of water or a bottle of water to drink, think about those people who just don't have that or worry about how to get water every single day to survive. This actually is a picture of the brick that um, I now have more memorialized my grandmother's quote at Sonoma State Holocaust and Genocide Memorial, which I hope one day you go take a look at because it is a memorial that has um, uh, memorial bricks for um, people from all different all different genocides. And so this is a wonderful way that I was able to memorialize my grandmother's wonderful quote. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about was my aunt. Again, she was two years old at the time of the genocide. When they escaped north, my grandmother told her story, actually when she was much older, that when they got to a river, she saw a whole bunch of Armenian mothers throwing their babies in the river. And she said, I looked at you and I looked at the river and I thought about, should I throw you in the river just like the other mothers were doing? And she said, I couldn't do it. My grandmother, I mean my aunt, survived to be 100 years old. And can you imagine she wouldn't have been able to survive if she had been thrown in the river. And the reason why you're wondering why the mothers were throwing their babies in the river, because they were so worried that if something happened to them, that their children would end up with a horrible life, whether it was um, death by starvation or whether they would be taken into a Turkish family and converted into Muslim versus Christian, because Armenians are Christian, um, and other devastating things, becoming orphans and trying to survive on their own. So that was a story, one story that I can share about my family. The other story that I can share is about my Uncle Archie. And my Uncle Archie um, was one of the only people that survived in his family related to my grandfather. And he survived as a teenager going north. He uh, joined the Russian army, somehow survived about a five-year period of time. 
ended up in Vladivostok, which is the most eastern city of all of Russia. When he got there, he saw a bunch of other Armenians and didn't know what to do, where to go. It turned out they found an Armenian woman in Japan who was able to find Japanese passports for all the people that were, were in Vladivostok. So she gave my uncle a passport. He came back, actually came back into the Middle East and ended up, um, ended up joining my grandfather and living with my father's family um, after he survived the genocide. I also have a brick for him to memorialize almost going all the way around the world to survive. So you're probably wondering, where is Armenia? Well, here's a map we're going to try to show you. If you look at this map, you'll see that here's Turkey. Here's Syria, which is in the news a lot today. Here's Iraq. And here's Iran, as you know, is in the, in the paper a lot today in the news. And this area here is all of Russia. And over here are all of the past Soviet Union countries, biggest one, which is Kazakhstan. Do you look right here? There's a little orange area right here. That is Armenia. The country next to it on to the east is Azerbaijan and to the north is the country of Russia. The Armenians that survived the genocide were all of the Armenians that lived in this part of Turkey, which was historical Armenia, and Armenians had lived for centuries. Today, there's virtually no Armenians left. Anyway, that's a good idea about where Armenia is today. Um, let's give you a couple of fun facts. 95% of last names that end in I-A-N or Y-A-N are Armenian. And it was a way to keep and separate, it was a way to track and separate the Armenians in Turkey at the time. So it was really easy to find the Armenians, round them up, deport them, and kill them during the massacre. However, it was a blessing in disguise in many ways because that was the way that many Armenians find them, found themselves after the genocide and that's still how we find ourselves today because Armenians are dispersed all the way around the world um, in a term called the diaspora, which means dispersed all the way around the world. Um, so anywhere I go, I look for names that end in I-E-N or Y-A-N, including movies. I always wait to the end of every movie to see how many Armenians had been part of making this film. The other fun fact would be um, some famous people. The first one that's very famous as being Armenian is Kim Kardashian. Um, so Kim Kardashian um, has done some wonderful things for Armenians. She has really um, gone to bat to fight for Armenian genocide recognition and to make Armenians recognized in the world today. Another person is Cher, and her name is actually Cheryl Sarkeesian. So you can see two names there that end in I-A-N. A couple of men that you might know, one is Alexis Ohanyan, who's married to Serena, the famous tennis player. Alex Ohanyan is a founder of Reddit. And then you may or may not know Serge Tokjan, who was um, a rock musician in a system of a down who still does perform musician mu music today. Um, the other fun things about Armenia are the oldest shoe in the world was found in Armenia in 2006, and that shoe is actually a thousand years older than the Egyptian pyramids. Um, the oldest carpet in the world was found in the 5th century, and then um, the, um, that actually was found in Central Asia, and it was concluded to be Armenian because it was so old. Armenians have been making carpets for centuries and centuries. And then the apricot is actually from Armenia, and the name of it is Prunus armeniaca. So the next time you pick up an apricot, I hope you remember you're eating a fruit from Armenia. Now we're gonna to get to some not so fun facts. The first not so fun fact is that on April 24th, 1915, 250 of the Armenian intellectuals and leaders of our people were, um, were soon, they were all arrested and they were soon all murdered. So basically um, the way it was done was you take all the leaders away and then the people underneath don't know who to go to for protection. 800,000 Armenians were killed in the first four months, very much like the Rwandan genocide in 1994. And if you think about it, 800,000 people is the entire population of San Francisco or the entire populations combined of Sonoma, Napa, and Marin counties. So if you think about that for a minute, 
um, bring it to reality that if you can imagine going to San Francisco in any of those three counties and seeing no people left, that's what happened in the first four months of the Armenian Genocide. Total was 1.5 million Armenians were killed between 1915 and 1923. This genocide is denied today, to this day by Turkey. It was just recognized by the U.S. Congress in 2019 after many, many, many years of lobbying for recognition by the United States. 49 states have recognized it, 32 countries, and the Pope. Many other, other organizations around the world have also recognized it. However, it's still denied many, many places all over the world, many ways, um, many institutions, and that is very true of many genocides today. More people have, ge have perished from genocides in the 20th century than all wars combined. That's a huge number. And genocide is happening today. You'll find genocide in Syria, Sudan, Myanmar, Iraq, Somalia, the Central African Republic, Nigeria, Burundi, and there are many other hot spots. If you go to www.genocidewatch.net, you will see all the hot spots around the world. So um, there's so much more to the presentation, but there's a there's a famous quote that I want to leave you with uh, that was said um, uh, in 1939 as Adolf Hitler was justifying the invasion of Poland on August 22nd, 1939. Adolf Hitler said, who after all speaks today of the annihilation of the Armenians, justifying the Holocaust. I wanted to also let you know that the United States at the time put in um, many, many relief efforts to help the Armenians. The, um, the, Near, East, East, the Near East Relief Fund was started um, to raise money to help survivors of the Armenian Genocide. And it was the biggest relief effort ever in, in, the, in this country ever. And that's something that we should be proud of. Uh, between 1916 and 1930, the United States raised the equivalent of 1. billion in today's value. And it was the largest relief effort ever. And we should be proud of that. And it involved presidents and politicians and celebrity. And even Babe Ruth donated his bat to raise money to save the Armenians. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, Near East Relief is connected with somebody famous today. His name is Steve Kerr. And he is, um, as you know, he is the coach of the Golden State Warriors. His grandfather worked for the Near East Relief Society to help Armenians. His father, he was actually born in Beirut. Um, his father worked in Beirut. He worked for American University. He was actually the president of American University. And his father was assassinated in the Lebanese War. So when you see Steve Kerr, think about that background and remember the Armenians. And then I want to leave you with, um, again, the Sonoma State um, University um, Holocaust and Genocide Memorial. There's a beautiful memorial. And if you go there, those... Um, those um, bricks are there to see all of the genocides uh, represented um, at the memorial. And finally, there's a famous quote there that says, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter, which was a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. So from the few things you've learned today, I hope you can think about possibly learning more about the Armenian genocide. And what I'm gonna do is leave you with a five minute video that you can watch that was um, made by the turn of the century that is still um, relevant today that may give you some more information about the Armenian genocide. Thank you and I hope to see you some other day to give you my complete presentation. Stay well and stay safe.